Sanahita Champion, and I am so thrilled to welcome back, since season three, the wonderful, the beautiful, and only Shakira Edwards. Woo! Thank you so much. That was quite an intro. I am so happy to be back next to you and all your loveliness for the sweetest show in the Twin Cities. The sweetest show. The sweetest show. Delicious. Amazing. Are you so ready? I am so excited. We've got a really exciting show lined up. Should we Should we tell them what, what's in store? Yes. Yeah, so yes. I am chatting with Kiana Cook, mm. who we love. Absolutely. Founder adore. and owner of Lovely's Sewing and Arts Collective. Yes, that sounds amazing. Oh my gosh. And I'll be having a conversation with Step with Soul, a youth organization stepping for God. Amazing, right? Yeah, oh my give, gosh. Right? I like, just got goosebumps. Like what a lineup, right? Girl. I am so excited. And and we can't forget our amazing, our official, our wonderful candy fresh band. band. Let's give it up for them. This is awesome. We have to just get you guys excited, get hyped up. We don't want you to sit back and relax. We no. want you to hang out with us. We want you to turn up. It's a Friday night. It's Friday night. <laughs> right? right? We got to give some love <laughs> to National Endowment for the Arts, who is supporting this production for season five. But, but guess what? It's time to get started. It's time to go. You ready? All right. I'm ready. You're watching Candy, Candy Fresh. Fresh. That is for us. They're loving us. They're loving you. They're loving both of us. Girl. Yes. Welcome back to Candy Fresh. We are so, so excited to kick off season five, episode one with the lovely Kiana Cook. Welcome back, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So you were here many moons ago in season mm -hmm. three, and then we took our hiatus and la, la, la. You have been busy. I have. So first thing first, can you tell us about Lovely Sewing and Arts Collective? Yes. So at Lovely Sewing and Arts Collective, I teach young boys and girls 
ages 6 to 16 how to sew and do yoga. The kids, they come in, they create, they sell. We teach them about financial literacy and money management. We help them open up savings accounts or add to their existing accounts. And we hold our classes on the weekends and offer private lessons to adults and kids during the week. That's it? Like, oh my gosh, that is so much. Yeah, can you show some love? You had me at sewing and yoga, mm -hmm. so let's break that down. So let's break that down. Let's bring that down. So what the kids do is each class is a three-hour class. The kids, they love coming in for lunch, so we usually give them lunch for 30 minutes. I mean, we, I like lunch, too. I love lunch. <laughs> I've tried to give the kids pizza. I've tried to bring in other things. But the kids love the idea of us getting together and creating a lunch, a sandwich, a turkey sandwich with lettuce and cheese and whatever else they want. And then they get a slice of cake. Now, we have this delicious chocolate cake. Can I sign up? You can sign up. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We had this delicious chocolate cake. Now, some of the kids, they're like, no, I don't like chocolate cake. I'm like, well, you got to try this one. And... Every kid that try, tries that chocolate cake okay. loves that chocolate cake. Yes. Is it local? It is local, but I ain't about to be giving. Okay, um, okay, okay, I ain't okay. about to give. I ain't about to get all these no shout out. Hold up. They just have to go. <laughs> they just have to sign up for class. I'm about yes, to be like, Yes, sign up for class. Time? Okay. So, so 30 so minutes of lunch, 30 minutes of yoga, and then two hours of sewing. And when it's time to go, the kids still don't want to go. I'm like, listen, y'all got to get up out of here. Miss Keanu needs a break. <laughs> you love what you do. You've been doing it for quite some time. And if you follow yes. her on social media, which I do, I can you do the behind the scenes. Um, you show off. It looks like you guys do a fashion show or some sort of little presentation. Absolutely. So we just did our spring fashion show. So we do a spring and a fall fashion show. We did the spring fashion show. The theme was Candyland. <gasps> so the runway was set up like Candyland. We had over 500 people in attendance. Stop. And if you missed Candyland, yeah, apparently I didn't because get because we memo. talk about Candy Fresh here. <laughs> if you miss Candyland on September the 11th, we will be doing Soul Train. <gasps> she is so dressed up for this, y'all. Look at this. Can you Am just I do not? a little 360, honey? Okay, yes. I'm gonna see you. <laughs> Period. Period. So, how frequently do the kids come in for this? Is it like a one-time camp? Is it like a month-long so, thing? So we do do a yearly camp in the summer, but we already had the camp. The kids had a fashion show. We partnered with Capital One Cafe at the Mall of America and did the fashion show there. But the kids have the opportunity to not only participate in either the spring or the fall fashion show, they also have the opportunity to sell pieces that they continue to make in the sewing classes. We run on a month-to-month -month basis. Okay. And some of the kids have been coming for three months. Some of the kids have been coming for seven years. So each child is on their own individual journey, and we don't stop the kids from coming. Oh, my goodness. That's so cool to see kids come back. Yes. You see returners? Yes. How much they've grown personally, intellectually, sewing ability, mm -hmm. confidence. Um, okay, so what's the other part? There was like tons of bullet points. I only digested a couple things and cake and you lost me there. So you said, <laughs> let's be real. You said adults and other types of So we moved, so before we were in co-working spaces, which limited uh, what classes we could offer. But once we moved to our new location that we moved into, first of all, we've been in existence for 14 years this year in June. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my goodness. So we moved into our own teaching space that we don't have to share with anybody in December. And since December of last year, we've up the numbers from working with 150 kids a year to now 50 kids as far as like kids. Now we're working with kids and adults. And then just six months, it spiked up to over 300 people that we've wow. been able to work with. They love you. Yes. Where are you located? We're located in the North Loop. Okay. So people got to go to your website? How do they find out where to register and all the things? So you can register on our website at lovelyssewing.org. But... We also are on Groupon because during COVID, I know, 
really? Yes, we're on Groupon too. So if you want to <laughs> save a few coins, I mean, I'm not you, mad about that. <laughs> listen, if you want to save a few coins, you can always go on Groupon and buy the Groupon, and then the Groupon is good for up to six to eight months, and you can just sign your kids up through Groupon. Okay. And I don't stop people from using Groupon every month, so you okay. can continue to use That's it. That's so nice of you to offer that. You yeah. know, we want to value you and pay you what you what you deserve to be paid, but mm -hmm. we like to save some money, too. Absolutely. Okay, so what else are you up to? You have this beautiful dress behind you. So the beautiful dress that's behind me, this is one of my pieces that I created. And so during the fashion show, not only do the kids get to show out, but me and six other designers will also, local designers will also get the opportunity for us to all mm -hmm. show out. One of my friends, she is a crochet designer and she crochets with wire. She's been featured in wow. New York. Uh, Fashion Week, she's been all over the place. Another one of the designers, Flavor World, he's amazing. Uh, he he takes and he redoes jackets, pants, you name it. And the kids, they do that too in the sewing classes. So the inspiration is just alive. It's it's alive. Well, let's just give some shout out to you and your work. I mean, you have a label, you have a brand. Mm -hmm. People in the fashion industry here in the Twin Cities know you as. Quabella Couture. Quabella Couture. Mm -hmm. I don't want to butcher that. No. Nope. It's outrageous, like exemplary. So is this one of your styles and designs? So, so this is one of my pieces that I created, and this collection was basically my coming out phase because if I'm going to come out, I'm going to come out with my culture as an African-American. Real strong. Yeah. Okay, so I love that. This piece was featured at the W Hotel with uh, seven other pieces that I created. Okay. And I partnered with Minnesota Fashion Week for me to showcase these pieces. It's beautiful. Is this not just stunning? <laughs> have, you, um, have you named her? I like to name mannequins or, or, or staple pieces. No, she don't need no name. Okay. Because depend listen, she. depending on where she depending on where she go, <laughs> like she I wore her for Bridgerton and I wow. won Bell of the Ball. I see why. So she needs no name. No, she does not. She just is. The glow. So is this Oh, I like that. The glow. The glow. Miss <laughs> Glow. Go ahead and glow girl. Hashtag the glow Please. girl. Glow girl. Give them a little spin. Do you <laughs> Baby. <laughs> yes, glow girl. <laughs> yes, glow. Do you have your work in the space and in the studio so the kids can see it? Absolutely. And do they ask about it? Do you talk about it? Like, I want to hear more about, I mean, kids' imaginations. Mm -hmm. I got my little seven-year-old here, and she loves crafting things. She's got the imagination. Talk about the imaginative ideas and, you know, what comes out of these kids and what they're creating and where they might be drawing their inspiration from. So the kids... They draw their inspiration from everywhere. But we give them themes. We give them ideas of what they can create in the class. And we let them run wild from there. So this piece that I created right here, I created this piece draping it on the dress form. The kids during the summer camps and also the kids in the sewing classes, they had the opportunity for them to drape on the dress form. And they, and they also have to like brainstorm forward. So I'll have them create something on paper, create a pattern on paper. And then I'll say, okay, once you create this pattern on paper, imagine an eight year old doing this. I'm so expecting them cool. because I believe in their greatness. Yeah. So I'll tell them, look, create a pattern for what you want to do. Sure. Draw out a sketch, then we'll create the pattern. From the p pattern, we'll actually sew it up. I do not help them sew. I guide. That's my job. My job is not for me to do the work for them. Sure. Because as leaders, as a leader myself, in order for me to train them up to be an amazing leader and have the confidence right. and everything that they need that's deep inside of them, right. I have to let them do their own work. And that must be hard, too, because kids get frustrated easily, just as adults do. Mm -hmm. Man, we're trying to all get through our little moments. Do you have help? Are you the only one in the room? Absolutely not. No. I have about mm -mm. three or four other volunteers. <laughs> so the one thing that the kids said they love about my classes the most is that the classes are small and that okay. the kids are able to get the one-on-one -on -one attention. Sometimes I have to tell my volunteers, step back. <laughs> They get too well, hype about it. No. They're all excited. They be on the side like, okay, so, so that. Nope. Mm -mm. Walk away. 
Wow. Because if my kids, because they're mine once they come to the oh. class, some of them call me auntie, of some course. of them have slipped up and called me mom, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> but when they're in the classroom, I tell my, my volunteers, like, step back so that they can figure it out. Because I, in my class, I want them to be in a position where they make mistakes and they figure it out. Right. But if somebody is over them, hovering, and always giving them the answer, they'll never try and figure it out. They'll right. wait for somebody to give them the answer. Isn't that right? I mean, it's hard not to interfere because you want to, like, tweak up something or hold the scissors the right way. I'm sure when safety comes mm -mm. into play, you know, you guys got to, you know, do your parameters. But M My kids are such leaders in the class that one of my babies, she, after the class, she was like, she was like, well, the volunteer was helping me too much. Oh, oh you tell Miss Kiana that. <laughs> yeah, she she was teary eyed about oh. it. And I was like, well, we gonna help you a little bit, but I'll make sure that my volunteer bags up off you a little she, bit. It's her time. Yeah. It's and her for time. some kids, who what are the how do you explain the kids' experience? Because you just never know where a kid comes from. They could be having an awesome day on their first day mm -hmm. or second or third day. They may have some you know, trauma and just different experiences that are really hard to channel through. But when they're in your room, like how do you, how do you work and channel through all the different energies? So I never assume anything with the kids. Right. I tell the kids, listen, when we're in this space, we're in this space for you to be on your own personal journey. And that's why we do the 30 minutes of yoga before we start sewing. Mm. And I'm, and because the classes are small, I can pay attention to the kids and I can see like, if they haven't taken a nap before they came to sewing class. That happens to or, me sometimes. <laughs> right? Okay, so the classes are from two to 5 p.m. Okay. So when the kids come in, if I try to do like yoga before I feed them, the kids will be like, but I'm hungry. Right. I ate breakfast, but I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have our lunch first. Okay. This way, they get in the groove of whatever they may have been going through before they got to the class. Yep. They can get it out of their system before they start sewing. Because it's focus time. Yep. Even though they're keeping their hands and brains busy mm -hmm. and you're creative, you're still, you know, little bodies sitting there, which, you know, grown bodies sitting there is tricky sometimes too. What about um, breaks, brain breaks, dance breaks? What, uh, how do, what so do you they get do they, there? They get their brain break <laughs> and they dance break before they start sewing. Oh, okay. okay. All of that. So <laughs> doing the yoga... The kids, they do yoga, but I also allow them to dance. Uh, we do headstands. We do everything so that the kids can get all of that extra energy up out of them. Yep. And then we and start And then they're sewing. ready. They're ready. What has been one of the most touching moments of the experience for you? That's a lot of, of years, but let's say in the last couple of years, especially with COVID has kind of <laughs> shaken things up, but coming back from that, the classes or yoga or the show, the presentations, what, what's a moment that really touched your heart? Well, all the moments, because we don't want to discredit, all the moments yeah. touch my spirit, touch my energy and everything. But when kids finish their projects and the smiles that are on their faces and they're like, auntie, auntie, look, look, I finished, I finished, I finished. That's the moment. Okay. That's the moment in time that we'll never be able to get back. And I tell the kids when they come to the classes, listen, when you give someone your time, you're giving them a moment in your life that you can never get back. And that goes for you as well. Right. Every single moment has to count. Every single minute has to count. So when you come up in here, come up in here focused. Oh. I come up in here sometimes, yep. and I'm tired. Yeah. And because I'm a couture designer, I get frustrated when the garments aren't created exactly how I want it to be created. But it's okay to get frustrated, it's and it's okay, okay to get to upset. Get frustrated. How can we support you? So you can support me by signing your kids up to the sewing classes. You can support by coming to the fashion shows and maybe you don't have no kids. Right. 
Right. Maybe you want to sponsor a kid because you know that a kid will love the experience of the discipline that I'm going to offer them. Because, listen, I am the auntie, <laughs> but I'm I'm the strict auntie. I'm the auntie that holds the kids accountable. Sometimes and it takes it takes a community, right? It takes a community. Listen, <laughs> it takes a community to raise a child. But I added in my own little narrative to that. It takes a community to raise a community. Oh, that is so beautiful. And if we all shift our mindsets to think from the perspective of we got to do this together, and if we save the minds of the kids right. at a early age, we won't have so many adults that we have to save. Listen, that is real talk. And I think we're going to drop the mic right there. I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> Good. If y'all want to learn more about Kiana, it's lovelyssewing.org. Yes. All right. Give it up for Kiana Cook. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> Candy 
What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the fifth season of The Swedish Show in the Twin Cities. I am so lucky to have an amazing group of people with me. I already like them. We've become acquainted. We're friends at this point, right? So help me in introducing Step With Soul, a youth dance group glorifying God in every step. Let's give them a round of applause. Did y'all hear that intro? So next to me, I have Sean Burns, the founder, the creator of Step With Soul. Tell me about the name, because there's so much power in it. Thank you. Well, the name, to be honest with you, um, the name speaks action, mm. right? Um, so at first, the name was Soul Steppers. But Soul Steppers doesn't speak to anything, right? Mm -hmm. So we want our, our, our youth to step with conviction, um, step with confidence, so and also step with soul. I love that. Yes. Absolutely. So... Soul Steppers, don't get me wrong, like that is an amazing name as well, right? It's all right. It's all right. It's so all right. so what made you, what made the, the change of name come to you? What, did it come to you in a dream? Were you just, you know, watching the kids do their thing and you're like, we need more conviction? How did you storm up, brainstorm up that particular name? So to be completely honest with you, um, when we were um, coming up with the first website, um, the guy who engineered the website also created the um, email address. Love it. And, you know, for a while, Soul Steppers was not, you know, talking, to, speaking to my soul. Mm. And, you know, I just prayed about it, and, you know, asking for a new name. And, you know, I looked at the computer screen one day, and it was right there in front of my face. I love that. Step with soul. I love that. It yes. has such a nice ring to it. Now, you spoke about praying. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us what, look, he's ready. Y'all say, <laughs> yes. Tell us what the impact that God has had on this group of young people and on you um, just throughout the journey of Step With Soul? Well, Step With Soul, first off, it's, it's, a, it's a Christian organization. Um, we use the art of stepping to glorify God. Um, and these young people, they're learning about themselves. Um, they're building a relationship with the Lord. Mm. Um, they're learning uh, transferable skills that they can use in the classroom, mm. beyond the classroom. Mm. Um, maybe if they are part of a dance team or, um, if, you know, we got athletes here, we got singers, mm. um, they're going to need these skills to just be s successful, uh, where everywhere they go. Mm, absolutely. So clearly you're more than just a dance group. Oh, you just named... more, more than a step, step team. Okay. Step there, team. There's now, so when, much that, yeah. that the resume yes. is extensive, more yes. than just a step team. Mm -hmm. I heard y'all practicing out there. And I am highly impressed. I heard more than just stepping. I mm -hmm. heard some vocals, like you said. Mm -hmm. You got some singers, right? I heard all types of things. What, going into this, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you're a creative person. What made you decide kind of what guidelines you'd follow? Because it sounds like y'all do a little bit of everything. What's off limits, if anything? And what are the main things that y'all focus on besides stepping? Well, you know, we don't serve an off limits God. Mm. So, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever, um, Whatever art or whatever talent you know our young people have, um, we're gonna we're gonna infuse that um, into their lives and, and into our routine, um, and try to you know empower our audience mm. and try to bring other youth you know in, 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 into our program yeah. as well. So tell me a little bit about the origin of your program, where y'all meet, how long you've been sure. around. So step with so we so short story. Um, at first, we were an all-male group mm. called the Women Boys Separate for Christ back in 2009. Um, Women Amy Church asked me to teach these young men some steps. Um, you know, I, at first, I was kind of like, I don't know, church? <laughs> right, and, and right, right, step. right, 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 right. <laughs> well, we're going to be stepping in the sanctuary, <laughs> like, you know. Right, right. You know, usually, you know, you see choirs and you see praise dancers, mm -hmm. but I've never seen any steppers. Right. So um, the whole concept to me, you know, it didn't make sense. But but like I said, you know, we serve a God who's, you know, he's going to use all talents, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so he used steps. So anyway. Um, I taught them a short routine. Um, then the, the short routine um, be became the journery. Mm. Uh, was with them for about 13 years. 
Um, then after the 13 year period, Step with Soul Ministry and Hands and Feet was born. Wow. So now we are a co-ed, co-ed ministry, outreach co-ed ministry. Yes. And I, it's so funny. You beat me to it. But yes, I, I don't, when you, when I think church and uh-huh. step, right, it doesn't seem like the two mesh well, but clearly they do. Like I said, I heard y'all practicing. It was, y'all are naturals. When you started off with this whole, you know, with this, because to you, it sounded, it's a head scratcher, right? So when you started off with this and you mixed the two together, what are some challenges you faced? Challenges I face. Uh, hmm. Well, keeping the steps fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, step is um, it, it's 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 foreign. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in, in in the Twin Cities. Yeah. So having a, a community buy-in to using the art of stepping. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's kind of like a hair scratcher for for even for other people, mm-hmm. you know. I'm I'm from New Orleans. Ooh, okay. So yeah, ooh, ooh. great yeah. food. It, so I hear. A- amazing. Amazing food. Yes. Amazing food. Yes, I have to go. We, we, have, we have to edit that. I'm just no. kidding. Oh. All right. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> I'm gonna mess with you. Um, so so basically that's the barrier mm-hmm. is 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 really you know um, sticking to. God's plan, mm. using the art of stepping, no matter if we are in, in, in a foreign land mm-hmm. where, you know, step really doesn't exist. I mean, when right. you think of step, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I'm not trying to toot our horn or anything, but, you, you know, you hear step with soul. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So. And, and toot your horn, please, by all means. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, you didn't come here alone, right? I did you not. You came with some friends. Yes. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Good, good. So you look like a talented bunch of kids. You look so happy, so excited. I, I absolutely love it. Oh, look at this little one. He's, yes, yes, I am. It's Friday. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about your youth group and what are some, what are some guidelines? Like, am I considered youth? Like, who can join Step With Soul? Um, I guess my answer would have to be, like, um, pretty much anybody who's uh, trying to um, be proactive mm. or learn something new, mm. uh, okay. even learn about the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So, like, again, it's a, it's a youth step group, right? So, 30, what you think about that? Uh, n- nah. Okay, okay. I, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> I really do, young man. I appreciate the honesty. And what about what about for little, little ones? Is anybody too young to join Step With Soul? Seven. Seven. Okay, so that's up. So seven to eighteen ish, thirty ish. That's a really good, a really good range. Uh, I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to weasel myself in. Uh, so for you, young man, how long have you been involved with the program? Whew. Uh, man. Since about like fourth grade, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's the biggest lesson you've learned? Because as he said, you're not just stepping, right? Y'all are doing a little bit of everything while. Praising the Lord. So what's the biggest lesson you've learned in your time? Um, that would have to be um, that it's not about, like, one person. It's the team as a whole. Yes, like, there's it's, no it's I gonna, team. It's not going to work out if it's just you. It has to be the team together. I love that. And what's your favorite thing about Step With Soul? <clears throat> um, meeting people, getting out of the house, uh, Doing something. Yes, yes. That's a great answer. And speaking of getting out of the house and meeting new people, um, you said you've been doing it since fourth grade. You didn't disclose your age, which is fine. But we had a national pandemic just a couple couple of years ago, right? So how how did Step With Soul continue to step on during that time? Um, it, I would say it wasn't phased, really. Oh, I love that. I love um, that. Because... He's like, I'm proud. You make me... Yes, good answer. Um, just because it just really it really kept going. It yeah. wasn't like there were some challenges, but we overcame them. So yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that's a testament, like you said, that y'all are moving with God because a lot of things shut down, right? A mm-hmm. lot of things were came to a halt. A lot of things aren't here today. So that's really, really, really cool. Um, so I do just want to ask you a couple more questions here okay. about your background. We're okay. not done, but thank you so much, <laughs> young man. Um, so you said you started off teaching folks how mm-hmm. to step, right? Yes. So, so where did you, like, you know, how long have you been doing your thing? Um, it sounds like a while. It sounds mm-hmm. like you're a seasoned vet. And how did you get into it in New Orleans? So actually, um, my, my first instructor 
who taught me my first step um, is actually a member of um, Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, yeah, <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> um, but it was my second instructor who, um, he's a man of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, who really started, not only did he teach me the art of stepping, but he also began to um, explain the history mm. behind step, uh, which I really fell, fell in love with, yeah. you know? Um, and then when I was in high school, um, my first job was to, was working at a community center. Mm. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell my age because I'm okay with that. Okay. So I'm yeah. 40, 45 yesterday. Oh, happy okay. birthday! Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo! Right. Woohoo! Right. That's right. amazing. That's still, amazing. Still got a head full of hair. Right. Right. See. No gray. You know, I no gray. No gray hair. I got a little gray right there. Okay. You know. that, you're good. Um, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so at this community center, mm. uh, this is when VCRs. Oh. He's really existed. aging himself. Okay, yeah. He's really yeah, aging and, and himself. That's okay. You know, okay. You know, yeah. So I've been teaching step since the VCR days. Jeez. Okay. Cassette yeah. players, all that stuff? C cassette players and all Ooh. that. Walk okay. You taught the first step. No, that's I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I apologize. We can edit that wow. out. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm right behind you. I'm okay. right behind you. So yeah, so that's how long I actually been been teaching step. And Ooh. now I actually teach step full time. Mm -hmm. Um at Perdeo Academy mm -hmm. um, as a specialist teacher. So we have gym, we have yoga, we got music, we got amazing, art. Amazing. And we got step. I love that. Right. I so the that. kids, so I teach kids pre K, mm -hmm. eighth grade, you know, they learn certain elements of, of step and they mm -hmm. also, you know, learn some history behind behind the art. That's amazing. As so well. Obviously, you've been teaching for a long time since we had cassette players, Stop right, playing. and VCR. <laughs> but what drew you to the youth? Because you could have taught college students. You could have taught older folks. What drew you to our younger kids? I'll be honest with you. So, you know, stepping in, you know, with my fraternity, you know, being part of the uh, Divine Nine and, and, and competing in, in that arena, you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. But there was something about the kids when, when the kids are stepping to me, it, it just pops differently. Yeah. Um, and then also, I feel like even though they're learning a, a routine, mm -hmm. you can see how the art form is actually impacting them, mm, right? Yeah. It's making them more confident. Mm. Um, they're being put in um, situations where um, they have to do a little public speaking. Um, they have to work together. Um, it's, just, it's just amazing of what the art does um, with the youth, um, that it's just, I don't know, it's, I love it. Yeah, and you have to know you're making a huge impact on their lives. I mean, just from hearing this young man mm -hmm. speak, it's very obvious. So tell us, like, one, where we can follow Step With Soul, but also, what do y'all have in store? The summer's not over, right? Summer's not, no, actually, yeah. the summer's not over. It's not over. Uh, I know my parents looking at me like, well, you said it was over. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all right there, though. What's up, parents? <laughs> and let me get a... I want to give a shout out to my parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Give the shout out. I love y'all so much. Oh. Um, they make my job so easy. Oh. So. Yeah. Shout out to them. Thank you. That's amazing. What an amazing leader you are. You can tell that there's so much passion and uh, you love what you do. It's very obvious. So we we thank you for the, the impact you're making. I'm speaking on behalf of the parents. <laughs> for the impact that you have in this community, right? Mm -hmm. And it shows. And you can just tell. First of all, I don't know too many kids that would just stand still like this under lights. I haven't heard a, a, a well, laugh. I haven't heard well, anything. So well, so you're doing your thing. But in all seriousness, but, tell us tell us yeah. what y'all have in store so, for the rest of the year. Um, so for the rest of the um, year, we uh, we're actually we got invited to uh, minister at the CHS field for um, Children's Hospital. Amazing. There's something going on with the Children's Hospital's yeah. um, private event. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be there next Saturday. Um, you can catch us um, August. 12th at um, at Kennedy High School for Bloomington School District. Uh, we have our new enrollment starting mm -hmm. next Thursday. Um, I'm missing something. We're also going to be ministering at um, Positive Image um, Father, no, Mother Sundance in October. So in other words, y'all are booked, We're booked and y'all are busy. busy. I yes. love it. Tell the folks where they can follow you, where they can get their kids to sign up and join. Yeah. So we have a Facebook page, Step With Soul, Ministering With Hands and Feet. 
um, look for this logo because there is some copycats out there, some scammers. But look for this logo. Um, and then all the information in terms of how to enroll um, is there. We're at Perdeo Academy Thursdays um, starting next Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. in Columbia Heights. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sean. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Without further ado, give it up for Step With Soul. to love. 
I'm gonna search into the end of time I saw you out of the corner of my eyes Reminding me to always smile Picture us in a, a darkened room There's so much that I want to say to you, yeah, yeah, I hold the answers that you'd provide, haunt me now since you pushed me aside, Gemini. About it more than a thousand times The amount of love it has to take To love another seem to overtake I won't question I won't quick love Watching reactions you were forced to make In a, a darkened room There's so much that I want to say to you Yeah, hold the answers that you provide Hold me now since you pushed me aside yeah. Yeah. 
time ever. Y'all, like, did you have a good time? Yeah! Oh my gosh, this was the most epic kickoff that we could ask for for season five. We are so grateful for those tuning in today, and we're so grateful for our guests and our band being here. Absolutely, and we cannot forget our lovely audience members. Oh, heck no. And, then, and also, uh, yeah, let's, 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 let's give a round of yes, applause. Yes, 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 shout yes. out, love it. Yes. And I can't forget you. An amazing host. You oh, killed it. And welcome back to Shakira Edwards. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Step With Soul. Thank you so much, Kiana Cook. Thank you so much, SPNN Band, Candy Fresh Band. Um, you guys, we're not done. We got way more coming up on season five because you are watching Candy, Candy Fresh. Fresh. It's you next time. Candy fresh, got the new name. Next to kill with us on 